It really does. Are you wondering what it's like to study and sit the CASA CPL Aircraft General Knowledge Test? In this video, I tell you my experiences, the materials I used, and some tips and tricks along the way. So I'll just throw this up here and let's get into it. Hey, you got it. Welcome to Spruce Moose Aviation. Engines, electrical systems, superchargers, turbochargers, hydraulics, undercarriage, CSUs. Uh, did I say fuel systems? I don't know, I've probably left a whole bunch out, but this one is jam-packed. Hi, my name's Tom, I'm a private pilot from Sydney in Australia. Uh, for me, this is test number two of seven for the CASA CPL tests. I uh, sat meteorology first, and I made a video on that one as well, which I'll leave a link at the end of this one if, you, if you're keen to watch, go and watch that. With that said, uh, the materials I used for this were the Bob Tate, uh, Bob Tate AGK or General Knowledge uh, textbook. You can see with this one, I've destroyed it. Um, yeah, there's a few months in between me sitting uh, meteorology and AGK, and I drive a truck for a living, so this one came with me everywhere. And I left it in the cab one time when it got a service. They tilted the cab and it fell out into a bucket of water apparently. So yeah, I was gonna buy a new one, but I managed to be able to read it still and just yeah, push through. So you gotta do what you gotta do. So I used the book and I used PPE, uh, pilot practice exams online. So they were the only two things that I used for this exam. I've been in transport for most of my career so far. Um, I thought I had a, a fairly good handle on, on this subject. And yeah, just using the Bob Tate book seemed like it was um, enough for me. But yeah, we'll find out how my result went at the end of this video on my first attempt at uh, general knowledge. In my previous video, I did suggest using the Bob Tate practice exams as well, uh, but they are fairly expensive, about $100 for four exams. They are really good quality, so um, you know, if you're in doubt, I definitely suggest using those as well as a, as a last final prep for AJK. I didn't for this one, something I probably could have done and should have done because yeah, you'll see at the end of this video with my result. My process for studying was uh, the same process that I took for meteorology. And that was to read over the, the information in the book once and as I'm reading over it, highlight. So go through and highlight it. I just find that the highlighted sections, if they're the most important, what you deem to be the most important, then it's quicker to, to refresh using the highlighting method and then go back to pilot practice exams and then come back to the book again. And so in this video, I'm gonna keep it a bit shorter than my meteorology video. I will make a separate video on 10 tips to pass the CASA CPL exams. As for the materials you can take into this exam, it's, that's it, it's you. You can't take anything into the exams. The exam facility provides everything that you need. And to be honest, I, you don't need, you know, I, I think I did use, there's a bit of paper there and a pen. I drew out an electrical system just to refresh my memory. Um, I'd recommend booking a morning exam. I find that in the morning, your brain just seems to be fresher. You, if you're like me and love coffee, you can get caffeinated uh, on your way to the exam and yeah, find that you're just fresh. With this exam, you have 90, 90 minutes to complete the exam. I found that was plenty of time. So you probably want the result already or you probably don't even care, but I'm gonna give it to you anyway. First, my first attempt on aircraft general knowledge. Boom, 75%. Uh, so yeah, it's a pass. Um, Got to be happy with the pass. But to be honest, I thought I'd do a lot better, which also got me to thinking, I wanted to ask you guys a question. Because you get three attempts on every CASA exam, I find that a lot of students that fail the first time might fail by a really close margin, say 68%, 65%, and then go back into a second exam and get really high marks, so 90%, 95%, because 
they've, they've experienced the exam first time, they might get some repeat questions, they've gone back and just that extra bit of honing of, of questions and, and theory that you need to do. Um, does it, do you know if that actually affects once you have a CPL or employees gonna look that, okay, you have a CPL, that's all we care about? Or, I mean, I just wanna get over 90% in one exam, is it too much to ask? So yeah, leave your comments below on what you think of that theory. My next exam is going to be human factors. So I'm just trying to get a few of the exams that are the easier ones done first, get the first three or four uh, out of the way. And then I think I'll tackle the, the big one, performance. I'm looking forward to the challenge. So yeah, any tips that you can leave me in the comments below on that one as well, then uh, yeah, feel free to leave them there um, and any other tips as well if you've got any feedback uh, if anyone any other students are going to watch this video uh, look down through the comments and i'm sure that as a community we can we can all help each other out uh, obviously only getting 75 percent got some kdrs that i'll quickly read out as well um, for anyone that doesn't know the idea with the casa exams is that you do have to have 100 percent knowledge 70 percent is the pass mark except for all the exams, except for air law, which is 80%. And then once you get over that mark, if it's between the mark and 100%, you will have KDRs for the questions, the type of questions that you got wrong. And then you have to go and submit those to an instructor for them to mark off that you understand the knowledge. So yeah, if anyone's not a pilot and they're wondering, oh, these pilots are flying around with only 70% knowledge. Well, that, yeah, it's not true. We still have to make up that gap. So. My KDRs, I got carburetor icing. I mean, I'm, I'm upset with a lot of these, so I'm not, in, I'm not gonna make a lot of comments, but I should have, I should have got them. But uh, yeah, I'll just quickly read them out. Carburetor icing, uh, turbocharger system, boost pump operation, fuel vaporization, uh, amateur. So I got two of those, which, man, I got two. Carburetor icing, mixture control, uh, engine power and RPM and purpose of oil systems. So those are my KDRs, no comment. Well, I will have some flight vlogs uh, on the way as well. It's actually, it's a lot harder to set up everything you need for a cockpit with the audio and the cameras and just making sure I can get some quality uh, flight vlogs for you. But, but they are on the way. So if you're interested in watching those, please some, consider subscribing and hit the like button on the video. Really appreciate it. So I'll put a link to the uh, meteorology video somewhere here and uh, my first video. There'll be another random video up here. And you can subscribe using a little circle that's on the screen somewhere. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.